스킬은 I'll be honest up front. I'm conflicted about this movie. A Letter to Mamo is a 2011 Japanese animated feature film written and directed by Hiroyuki Okiura. Yeah, he only has one feature film under his director's belt before this called Jinro The Wolf Brigade, which I have not seen, so this is my first impression of his work. And as I said, I was rather confused about it. Well, let's not stall this any longer. This is my review of A Letter to Momo. The movie begins with our main protagonist, Momo Miyaura, arriving to a remote island called Shio. We find out that recently her father has passed away, and her mother Ikoko could no longer support both of them in Tokyo, so they were forced to move here to her childhood home. Momo views this change rather negatively, and is very pessimistic about this new place, as any kid her age would be, but later we get to know that this is more than just teenage angst. Momo partially blames herself for the death of her father because of the last words she spoke to him. Later, she found a letter her father had started writing to her, but had not finished. This letter contains only two words, Dear Momo. She doesn't start to like the place anymore when certain events lead her to the conclusion that the house where they are staying at is haunted. But these ghosts turn out to be these guys. Three guardians sent to look over Momo and her mother. And so shenanigans ensue, which take up majority of the film. This is pretty much Shenanigans the movie. The story was definitely the main issue I had with this film. I'll quickly run over the technical side of the feature and then I'll attempt to explain my stance. I'm starting to feel like there's no real point in explaining the visual quality of an animated feature film. Of course, it looks amazing from a technical standpoint. If I was to comment on the style, I'd say that this wasn't as visually appealing as the last movie that I reviewed, Wolf Children. It's obvious that Hiroyuki Okuda was going towards a more realistic look with this film, except for the mother, Momo, and other kids, all the side characters really look Japanese, and all the facial features are very refined when characters make strong expressions. Again, from a technical view, this is impressive, but I didn't really like it. At least in the beginning. Of course, you get used to it, and I can only praise the backgrounds. Animation, top notch. I can imagine that animating these more realistic looking characters was a challenge on its own, and they really did not cut any corners with that. The music. I didn't really notice the music. Of course, there are emotional ups and lows which are accompanied by musical pieces, but except for the sweet ending song, nothing really stuck in my head. Though I would rather be positive towards the soundtrack, as it really wasn't bad or distracting. For the life of me, I can't really remember how the climactic race against time sounded like, but I know that it did not sound bad. So here's the stuff. For the majority of this film, I could not understand what it was about. In the beginning of the story, Momo is separating herself from the people around her. So I obviously knew it was a coming of age tale where she would learn to appreciate the change and get over her guilt. But I couldn't really understand how or why any of the events happening will lead us closer to that. I felt like this till about halfway through the film, until some drama is finally introduced and then the movie became clear to me. The structure of this film is clearly inspired by my neighbor Totoro. 
our main characters arrive to a new location for them, they confront mystical beings and do just stuff with them, with seemingly no significance. Then near the end, there is a tightening in the situation, which is resolved with the help of these beings. But unlike my neighbor Totoro, a letter to Momo tries to be a more cohesive story. It's not the wondrous daydream Totoro seems to be. We have characters with clear motivations and personalities, there is an underlining story for why everything is happening, and Momo clearly goes through a character arc. But there was a moment while watching this movie when I caught myself with the thought, this is so Japanese. Well, for one, it made me do this Google search. Don't ask me to elaborate too much on that because I really can't, but I truly feel that there may be a little cultural barrier surrounding this movie. Unlike Wolf Children, which I can easily recommend to anyone, I may hesitate before suggesting this film to someone. Which is a shame because I actually liked it. Sure, for a large chunk of the movie, I was lost, but the finale really brought it back, and I couldn't fight off the smile that was on my face when the credits started rolling. This mixture of crazy, silly, realism and mysticism is a story you really shouldn't miss if you like films like My Neighbor Totoro and Spirited Away, or anything that I've said or showed you here has piqued your interest. And if you do choose to do it, I hope my review somewhat prepared you for it. In the end, I hope it's clear why I'm not entirely on either side of the fence with this one. There are aspects of the film I adore, and there are sides that I'm not the biggest fan of. I'm not rushing to see it again, but I wouldn't mind if a friend wanted to see it with me. I know this movie is getting a lot of love all around, but I wouldn't call it straight up success. But I still would recommend you to give it a watch and decide for yourself if you feel like this is your cup of tea. It just wasn't really mine. Peace, love music. Momo partially blames herself for the Momo partially blames herself for the death Momo partially blames herself for the Momo partially blames her Momo partially bl Momo partially blames Momo partially blames Oh god How do you say it Momo 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 Momo